Today, an FDA approval in renal cell carcinoma oncologic drug advisory committee meeting scheduled in tenosynovial giant cell tumor and acute myeloid leukemia, the launch of a new HER2 assay, and the announcement of the 2019 Giants of Cancer Care inductees. Welcome to Enclave News Network, I'm Gina Columbus. The FDA has approved pembrolizumab in combination with ixitinib for the frontline treatment of patients with advanced renal cell carcinoma. The approval is based on findings from the Phase 3 Keynote 426 trial, which demonstrated that the frontline combination significantly improved overall response rates, progression-free, and overall survival compared with sunitinib in patients with advanced RCC. Moreover, data showed that the combination led to a 47% reduction in the risk of death versus sunitinib. At a median follow-up of 12.8 months, results showed that the median OS was not reached in either arm. The median progression-free survival was 15.1 months for pembrolizumab and ixitinib and 11.1 months with sunitinib. With the combination, there was a 31% reduction in the risk of disease progression. This is the first anti-PD-1 therapy that is approved as part of a combination regimen that significantly improved OS, PFS, and ORR compared to sunitinib in this patient population. The FDA has scheduled an Oncologic Drugs Advisory Committee hearing from May 14, 2019 to discuss a new drug application for pexidartinib for the treatment of adult patients with symptomatic tenosynovial giant cell tumor. The agency granted a priority review designation to the application for pexidartinib in February 2019. The decision was based on findings from the Phase 3 and LIVIN study, which showed a superior overall response rate with pexidartinib at 39.3% compared with 0% with placebo after 24 weeks of treatment based on central review of MRI scans. Additionally, the FDA scheduled a meeting for the same date to discuss the NDA for quizartinib tablets for the treatment of adult patients with relapsed refractory FLT3 ITD positive acute myeloid leukemia. Both therapies are developed by Daiichi Senko, Incorporated. The FDA granted priority review to the NDA for quizartinib for the treatment of adult patients with relapsed refractory FLT3 ITD positive AML in November 2018 with an original action date of May 25, 2019. In April 2019, the agency added three months of the review period for the application, allowing the agency to review additional data. The NDA is based on results from the Phase 3 Quantum R study, which showed that quizartinib led to a 24% reduction in the risk of death versus salvage chemotherapy in patients with FLT3 ITD positive relapsed refractory AML following frontline treatment with or without hematopoietic stem cell transplantation. The FDA will consider the recommendations of the ODAC panel following each hearing. Under the date, the FDA must make a decision on the approval for pexidartinib by August 3, 2019, and the deadline for the approval of quizartinib is May 25, 2019. A new Ventana HER2 dual in situ hybridization companion diagnostic assay has launched to identify HER2 amplification for patients with breast cancer and gastric cancer who could receive trastuzumab. The Ventana HER2 dual ISH DNA probe cocktail assay is currently available in Europe, the Middle East, Africa, Latin America, and Asia Pacific. An application for the test will be submitted to the FDA for approval. The Brightfield assay is designed to identify patients who have HER2-positive breast or gastric cancer and would be candidates to receive trastuzumab. Additionally, the test is devised to be completed within the same day, which Roach, the manufacturer of the assay, stated is quicker than most HER2 confirmatory tests. Additionally, the assay is fully automated on benchmark immunohistochemistry ISH instruments. Results from the new assay can be read via microscopy, which eliminates the need for a specialized fluorescence microscope. The inductees of the 2019 Giants of Cancer Care Recognition Program have been announced. This year, Enclave will honor 15 healthcare professionals who are advancing the field of oncology via their contributions in research and clinical practice. The winners will be celebrated at the 7th Annual Giants of Cancer Care Winners Reception on May 30th at the Adler Planetarium in Chicago. This year's Giants of Cancer Care inductees are the following. Breast Cancer, Dr. Eric P. Weiner of Dana-Farber Cancer Institute, Harvard Medical School. Cancer Diagnostics, Dr. Charles M. Peru of the University of North Carolina School of Medicine, Lineberger Comprehensive Cancer Center. Community Outreach, Education, and or Cancer Policy, Dr. Richard Pazder of the FDA. Gastrointestinal Cancer, Dr. Alan P. Vinuk of the University of California, San Francisco, Helen Diller Family Comprehensive Cancer Center. Genitourinary Cancer, Dr. Bernard J. Escudier of the Institute Gustave Roussy. 
gynecologic malignancies, Dr. Beth Y. Carlin of Cedar sinai Medical Center, leukemia, Dr. Frederick R. Applebaum of Fred Hutchinson Cancer Research Center, University of, of Washington, lung cancer, Dr. David H. Johnson of the University of Texas Southwest Medical Center, lymphoma, Dr. Saul A. Rosenberg of Stanford University, melanoma and other skin cancers, Dr. F. Stephen Hody of Dana-Farber Cancer Institute, Myeloma, Dr. S. Vincent Rajkumar of Mayo Clinic. Pediatric Oncology, Dr. Donald Pinkle of St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. Prevention Genetics, Henry T. Lynch of Creighton University. Supportive Palliative and or Geriatric Care, Dr. Jamie H. Von Rohn of the American Society of Clinical Oncology. Translational Science, Dr. Susan B. Horowitz of Albert Einstein College of Medicine. Congratulations to the 2019 Giants of Cancer Care. This week, we sat down with Dr. Jeffrey Thomas Gibney of MedStar Georgetown University Hospital to discuss gene mutations in melanoma. We know that melanoma has one of the highest gene mutation rates for all the tumor types. And this has uh, a very significant implications in both immunotherapy as well as targeted therapy, that many of these mutations are driver mutations that cause the cells to proliferate at faster rates, that cause them to migrate that also can bring in uh, vascular supplies so that they're well uh, nourished and actually can grow and divide at faster rates. Some of these mutations are very well defined and are seen fairly often within melanoma tumors. The ones that we most often see are in NRAS, CKIT, and BRAF. The uh, first identified mutation, a uh, driver mutation, was actually NRAS uh, in melanoma. Uh, clinical development has been very difficult in finding a very effective targeted strategy, whereas there's been uh, better development with CKET as well as in BRAF targeted therapy approaches. In particular, BRAF mutation happens in about 50% of patients' tumors, uh, especially if it's been sun exposed and arising from the skin. That mutation leaves the protein kinase in a constitutively active state. So it is continuously driving signaling through the MAP kinase pathway that leads to an aggressive phenotype within the melanoma cell. We know that it doesn't actually cause a melanocyte to become melanoma, but when it's introduced into the tumor cell, it causes it to be a much more aggressive, faster growing, and able to migrate and resist uh, cell death. Uh, the targeted therapy approaches have been very effective because the cells are, are very addicted to this pathway. So with the selective inhibitors, blocking that pathway has shut down the cell proliferation. And in animal experiments, as well as in patients, we see very dramatic shrinkage in tumors. The BRAF mutation we know is actually an oncodriver. Not enough to turn a melanocyte into a melanoma, but it makes it more aggressive. So it drives a pathway when it's uh, mutated. The most common mutation is the BRAF V600 uh, position, and that leaves it constitutively on. That protein kinase then drives signaling through MAP kinase pathway, and that can lead to a number of processes within the tumor cell that allow it to grow faster, to proliferate, to avoid apoptosis, to bring in vasculature, and to migrate. So it makes it a much more aggressive phenotype. BRAF is, so the BRAF target is a very specific mutation within a pathway, and it turns on that pathway in a very uniform uh, predictable pattern for the most part. So if you were able to block it, it can actually be very effective in shutting down the activity of the cancer cell. So we now have been able to develop very selective BRAF inhibitors that inhibit just the mutant protein kinase, the BRAF, and has very little off-target effect, which makes it a very uh, selective targeted therapy that can be blocked within the tumor cell. The, uh, the tumor cell, when it is blocked, that those that harbor the BRAF mutation actually uh, shut down cell proliferation and tumors in experimental models as well as in people can be seen to shrink very dramatically. That's all for today. Thank you for watching Enclave News Network. I'm Gina Columbus.